looking at Blackboard, um, so you should have received this announcement um, uh, last night uh, with a link um, to get Discord, to join the server, and also for the Open Lab. So we'll go over the Open Lab stuff in a minute. Um, and so if you, you know, the, that's the kind of like main announcement. Um, I probably won't use the announcements on um, the uh, Blackboard much uh, like throughout the semester. I'll probably do use Discord for most of the announcements, um, but it's there um, if you, uh, if you want to look at it. Um, the next thing on the Blackboard is the course information. This is pretty simple. It's just links to a bunch of different stuff. Um, that you may want to look at throughout the semester. Um, this is the stuff that we'll be using in class. So more likely what I would recommend, I know a lot of people use Blackboard as their kind of like way of getting to different parts of the course. And so those links are there uh, for that purpose. Um, but you can, you know, what I would recommend doing is bookmarking a lot of these links in your browser so that you can access them directly. Um, but anyway, the stuff that's in here is the course site, uh, the course schedule, a link to the Discord, which is just the link that's the same link in the um, announcement, and then a link where you can join the Open Lab. And I'm going to go over this in a bit more detail in a minute. Um, we're all going to do that together. And then a link to the Open Lab site. And there's a syllabus for the class. There honestly isn't a lot of useful information in the syllabus. Most of the information you need is in uh, the Blackboard and the course schedule. But the, but there's a syllabus there just because we have to have a syllabus. OK. so. That's the course information. Um, and we're going to come back here in a second um, once we go through the rest of the Blackboard. So under assignments, you will find all of the assignments um, for the semester. Uh, let me switch to student view because it looks a little bit different for you guys. OK, so here's assignments. Um, there's due dates on here. They're not necessarily going to stay the same. Um, I'll change the due dates depending on uh, you know how fast we move as a class. There's a little bit of flexibility in the schedule in terms of you know that we don't have to really. There's a lot of assignments in here, and so if we don't get to one or two of them, you know that's not the end of the world. Um, so we'll see how things kind of move along, and then we may change some of the due dates. But um, you can look at the for each assignment. There's a little description of what's required. And if you click on the assignment, it should open up like this. And you should see the due date. Um, this one is for Monday, September 5th. But I'm pretty sure we don't even have class that day. Um, let me double check. BMCC academic calendar. Um, so obviously, I'm, that's the first one that I'll have to. Yeah, so that's Labor Day. So uh, yeah, I kind of just like chose a bunch of dates. So I'll go ahead and update that. Um, after class today. Um, so yeah, those are already going to kind of move. Um, but yeah, so uh, anyway, if the due date was right, you would see it here. Um, but we're going to have to move that one uh, to the next day or whenever. Um, but then what's more important here, or the due date is important, but what's more useful here is this button that says View Rubric. Um, it's kind of small. It's a little bit hard to find. But if you click on that, um, it's actually going to open up in a new window, so you guys won't see this. So let me make sure to open up in this window. Here we go. You'll see a rubric. And in this rubric, you'll see everything that's required um, for the assignment. And I can, I'm looking now, I spelled documentation wrong, so I need to fix that as well. Um, but you'll see how much, what you need to do and how much each one is worth. And so when you turn in an assignment, typically I will go through the rubric and look at, you know, was this were each one of these um, requirements achieved? And if not, I'll write you a message uh, when I, when you, um, after you submit the assignment, I'll go through and grade them. And if you miss something, I'll write you a message saying, this is what you missed. And you can always uh, upload a new version of the assignment. So you'll see um, once you up, once you submit an assignment, um, there, you know, you have to wait, or actually, I don't know if you have to wait. I think you can submit the assignments as many times as you want. And so if, if you miss something and I say, hey, you missed this part and you want to redo it to get that credit, you can always do that. So um, I'm not sure you know, that may be uh, something that other classes do. My sense is that it's, it's not always the case. But um, as far as I'm concerned, if you want to you know, redo the assignment, uh, these are all project-based assignments. They're not like tests with... Um, you know, limited time or anything like that. So if you want to redo the assignment and fix the parts that you've missed, um, you're, you're able to do that um, as much as you need to. 
Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, you can always uh, update your assignment and get credit for anything that you might have forgotten to do or that you didn't understand. We can go over it and you can resubmit it. Um, so yeah, those are the assignments. Let's uh, get out of here for a second. Um, so there's a bunch of different assignments. Uh, I kind of change these from semester to semester, uh, depending on what uh, seems to fit within the class. But the, the basic way that it works is that um, after the first assignment, we kind of work on this like self-portrait project for a few weeks. Um, there's a few versions of that, and we kind of add a little bit to it each time. And then there's a new assignment after that, which is either creating a logo or a meme. And that's kind of a similar thing where we're going to make a few different versions of it and you can kind of make changes to it. Um, so we'll do that for a few weeks. Uh, then we have a few assignments related to creating patterns. Um, so again, same kind of thing where we're going to make a few versions of the same project, but adding new code ideas to each one. Um, and then uh, this one used to be a bit longer, but it kind of gets smushed in. So we could make this, we could do more with this. Um, there's a sound area uh, where we make like a sampler where you hit different buttons on the keyboard and it uh, plays different sounds and animations. Um, so that's something we could actually do more of if you guys were interested in it. Um, we could kind of move things around a little bit. Um, so, but yeah, that one is just one week now because we didn't really usually have a time uh, to do a, a whole other thing with that. Um, and then for the final project, so there's no real midterm. Um, we kind of do a few different uh, uh, three-week little projects, and then we have a final. And so the, for the final, there's a pitch where you kind of have to explain what you want to do for the final, and that's graded like an assignment. Um, and then there's the final project itself, where you, the, it's very open-ended, but what a lot of people do is take a project that they've already created for one of the previous um, assignments and then add to it to kind of make it more uh, robust. So that's usually what people do. But if you have like a really specific idea of something that you want to do for a final project, um, you're welcome to come up with a completely original idea. Um, so that's kind of the basic outline of the um, semester in terms of what the deliverables or assignments will be. Um, and we'll kind of go over how to how to do those. Um, they shouldn't, it probably looks like a lot of assignments, but a lot of them are just like variations of each other. So it's not quite as, as intense as it might look um, based on that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the basic outline of the semester. Um, and you know, if, if we need to change things as we go, um, I'm open to kind of moving things around or being flexible on that. Um, so yeah, that's the assignments. Any questions on on that before we keep going? Uh, that's a good question. I haven't we haven't really talked about what we're actually doing. So uh, we will be uh, we'll be using um, some of you guys may have done this in in MMP 100 using P5, which is a, a JavaScript library, um, and creating like multimedia sketches with P5. That's kind of what we'll be doing in this class, but like adding a lot to it. Um, and so I'll actually show in a minute a few examples of projects that we've done in past semesters. So that may give you a better sense of the kinds of uh, things that we'll be working on. Um, but I can show you real quick. Let me just show you guys actually um, last semester's site because that's a good resource if you're curious um, about what kind of things we'll be working on. Um, uh oh. Oh, I forgot I messed up the URL here. So this one is here. OK, so let me put a link to this in the chat. So this is last semester's site. And the Open Lab site, we'll go over how it works in a moment. But um, this is basically where you're going to post everything that you work on. And so if you look under here and go to posts, you'll see the projects from students last semester. And there's a lot of different types of projects. You can see some documentation and some descriptions of the kinds of things that we made. So a lot of the projects involve first writing some code that like creates, uh, you know, this one is a sound sampler. Um, it looks like this embed is broken, but if you click on the code, you can see the code here. And, um, you know, if we run it, hopefully it would run, but we don't need to do that right now. Um, there's some missing images here. So I'm not sure exactly why that is. They may, yeah, it may just be, oh, I think it's actually just kind of loading slowly because there's a lot of different posts. Um, anyway, uh, this is kind of what 
what your projects will look like, where you'll have some code that you write to create a project, but then you'll have some documentation. So like you'll take images or videos of the project and also write a little bit about um, what you're, you know, what you were working on. Um, so that's kind of the basic idea. I'll go over how we're going to do this in a lot more depth, um, but that's sort of what it, it, it will look like um, once we start turning in projects. Um, any other uh, questions about the assignments? All right. Well, if anything comes up, feel free to, to um, chime in. Um, the other link that you'll see in uh, Blackboard is your grade book. Um, I always put that in the menu uh, because it can be kind of hard to find and it's probably what you are going to want to look at. Um, you basically see all the assignments. Um, there's due dates here, which obviously I need to update because those are going to change. Um, but you'll see the grades you have and then uh, you can also look at the rubrics here. Um, and so you can you know, see all that information there. And then I think once you submit something, you should be able to resubmit it here. But um, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but yeah, so that's there. The rest of the stuff in Blackboard are just links to different resources. So there's a link to the tutoring uh, site for BMCC, um, which uh, we don't actually have a tutor for this class right now. Um, we're still trying to find a new tutor for the programming classes. But let me see if there's somebody else who could tutor for this course. Let's see. Well, they haven't actually posted all the tutors. OK, so we need to update this information. Um, so uh, maybe we'll come back to this later when they have the schedules for everybody. Um, there's also an online learning orientation. Um, I'm not really sure how useful this is. I haven't seen the new version of this. Um, there's help and resources. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff in here that could be very useful. Um, tech support could be useful if you need help with stuff. Um, the library, there's a bunch of stuff in here that uh, may be useful for you guys. And then the tools just has like all the links to, to various things. So that's basically uh, what, you know, what's on Blackboard is mainly just the assignments. That's where we're going to be submitting the assignments. Um, so let's keep going and look at the rest of what we're going to be working with. So uh, I'm going back to course information and we're going to take a quick, quick look at the course site and schedule. And we're already on Discord, so we're going to skip that one. And then we'll do the open lab stuff. So if you click on this link that says course site, you're going to see what is basically my site where I host all the content for the class. And so when I do a lecture or uh, a demo or something like that, I'll usually start here. Um, there's also links here to the schedule for the course, um, the syllabus, uh, which, as I mentioned, is you know not really that useful. Um, and there's a link to old student work. So this is projects from previous semesters. Um, I need to app actually update this. You can see I haven't updated it in a while, um, but I have. I should just add links to uh, these courses because I kind of changed the way that I, I had the class set up a little bit using the Open Lab. Um, but these projects are still, for the most part, made using P5 and and things that you could use. So. Um, there's some cool projects in here. This is like this UFO project. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is like an interactive self-portrait project. That's pretty cool. Um, let's see. I'm trying to remember. I haven't looked at these in a while. Oh, this is somebody did like an Ocarina of Time where you can play melodies using the different buttons. Uh, let's see. This is like a kind of interactive story with music where you can choose different um, options and it goes through a different story. It's a pretty cool one. Um, and then, yeah, if you go back, there's old versions. Um, this is kind of a funny interactive self-portrait. Um, this is a good meme project with a pretty simple animation. Uh, and then, yeah, it goes back for a while. Let's see. Uh, oh, this is a cool like 3D. This is a final project from a while back that's like kind of a um, solar system in 3D. Uh, so there's a lot of different types of projects. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here 
Um, if you're interested in the kind of work that we do in the class, I would look there and need to update with more recent links. Um, there's also examples um, from previous classes. So these are like my examples. Um, so you can kind of see the code that I wrote in these examples and also need to update this. I will do that um, soon. There's an inspiration where you can see different types of projects that use programming and get some different ideas for uh, what you might want to do in your own projects. I'll kind of go, we'll look at these at various points in the, in the semester to um, get more inspiration. And then there's a link here to the Discord um, as well. Um, so let's see, this stuff we don't really need to go over. I have a little error here. Um, one thing that you will want to use for this class is the Chrome browser. Um, we'll go over that in a second, but there's a link here. If you don't have Chrome on your computer or whatever you're using, um, you can click on that link and download Chrome. Um, and I'll actually put that in the chat because we're going to need that today. Um, probably we'll get to that point. Um, and Chrome is just the browser that I tend to use. And for a lot of the demos, um, it just makes it a lot easier if you're using the same browser to look the same um, when we're doing various things. Um, so that'll make your life a lot easier if you're using Chrome. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at the schedule. So this is pretty similar to what we looked at already with the assignments. Um, but you'll see on here, basically you'll see all the same assignments, but then there's also links to examples and lectures and things like that. So um, today, uh, this is the first kind of JavaScript intro lecture uh, that we'll do in a minute. Um, there's a link to doing a P5 intro, which we'll probably do in the next course, in the next uh, session. Um, there's a link to the Open Lab, which we'll look at in a second. And there's also a link to the course site here. Um, and that is the right link, although it looks like, oh no, that's the wrong link. Okay, I need to update this link. Um, I'll do that soon. Uh, and then this is the first assignment. Um, we'll go over this in the next session. We're not gonna get this far today. So don't worry about this for now. Um, but yeah, that's the schedule. So all of that information is here. It's kind of the same that's of the assignments that's on Blackboard. Um, but if you want to kind of take a look through what we're going to be doing this semester, that's the, the easiest way to do it. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned, you know, if you guys have, if you're like, we really want to do more sound stuff, or maybe let's do some 3D stuff and not do one of the sessions, um, we could talk about making some changes. But for the beginning, we're going to get started uh, with very simple basics, because obviously it's an intro programming class. Some of you guys have probably done a little bit of programming before, but we're going to kind of start from scratch as though there's no, you, you know, you've never done any coding before at all. So uh, we're all going to start kind of at the, that blank slate uh, starting point. Um, OK, then the next thing we want to do, maybe we'll do this next time, because we don't really need to do it today. Um, so maybe we'll hold off on the Open Lab until the next session. Maybe for today, we'll just do a little intro to JavaScript so we can actually learn some stuff. Um, and then next time, we'll, we'll do the Open Lab. Um, or if we have some time at the end of class, we can we can do it. Um, okay. So yeah, that's kind of a lot of info. Um, we'll get into like a real lecture in a second. Uh, but before we do that, um, we just need to make sure that everybody actually has Chrome uh, as their browser um, because we're going to do some interact interactive stuff during the lecture. Um, let's see. Yeah. So. Most of the time, we're going to have like a few different types of uh, lectures or demos. Most of the time, I will demo something in like 15 to 20 minutes, and then I'll give you guys time to work on it on your own. And we'll kind of have a lot of class workshop time. Sometimes, especially early in the semester at the beginning, I'm going to be going over stuff and asking you to follow along and do the same steps with me. So we'll kind of go back and forth. Um, I'm going to try to use the chat to do that, to give you guys something to click on when you're done. Um, and that's kind of how we'll, we'll try things out to start. Um, so that's what we'll do today, but uh, I'll kind of let you guys know um, what we're gonna be doing. Um, so for today, uh, the first thing we need to do is get Chrome, and um, I'll, once, we're, once we all have Chrome set up, I'll go over a couple things that we're gonna use with that. So um, I put the download link to Chrome in the chat. 
I'm going to put a little reaction there. Um, so I'm going to put a little thumbs up there. So when you've downloaded Chrome and you have it open uh, on your computer, um, you can click the thumbs up. Um, if you, for some reason, are not able to do that, if you're on your phone or something like that, um, let's put a different emoji. I'll just put a, uh, let's just use the floppy disk. So if you can't download Chrome for some reason, just click the floppy disk. And when those two numbers add up to um, 12, uh, we'll be ready to continue. So um, while we're doing that, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Um, and then we'll just wait for everybody to get ready.